Have you tried setting up Adventure Log on Unraid, only to get stuck on post GIS, missing database settings, and a bunch of vague variables? Yeah, you're not alone. In this video, I'm going to walk you through a clean working setup of Adventure Log on Unraid using post GIS and explain every setting you actually care about, including the ones the official guide kind of gloss over. Let's fix it. Hey everyone, I'm Jeff from Alien Tech 42, and today we're getting Adventure Log up and running on Unraid. Adventure Log is a self-hosted adventure journal and photo mapping platform. It lets you track your trips, hikes, travels, and memories all on your own server. You can add locations, photos, routes, and notes. And Adventure Log builds a beautiful interactive map showing everywhere you've been. The best part? You fully control your data because it runs on your home server. No cloud subscription, no tracking, no third-party access. In today's video, we're installing Adventure Log and Unraid using PostGIS so you get full mapping support and all the features the app offers. This walkthrough is based on a great community guide from the Unraid forums, plus some extra clarity and structure so you don't have to wrestle with it for hours. Here's what we're gonna do. Clean up any broken PostGIS and Adventure Log installs, create a custom Docker network just for Adventure Log, install PostGIS, create the Adventure Log database, configure the Adventure Log backend, configure the front end, and talk about exposing it to the internet versus keeping things local. In my example, my demo Unraid server lives at 10.0.0.11. This should be replaced with your own server IP address. All right, let's jump in. First, if you've already tried installing PostGIS and Adventure Log, and things are now a mess, we want to start clean. If not, hang tight and we'll get to the installation in a moment. First thing we're gonna to need to do is to remove any existing PostGIS containers, so what we're going to do is jump over to our Docker tab. We'll find the post GIS in the list, click on the icon, drop down, and we're going to select remove. You're going to get a notification window popping up asking, are you sure? Do you want to remove it? We do. And make sure that you have also remove image selected and then hit yes, delete it. If you have the adventure log front end or back end installed, you do the same process on those two. Now we're going to need to browse over to our app data share. And if you still have a post GIS folder, we're going to need to delete that. So let's go check that out. We'll jump over to the shares tab and there you'll find your app data location at the very front of it. You should have a browse option. Go ahead and click on that. We'll look through the list here for post GIS and there it is. If you have that there over on the right hand side, you'll find a plus with some dots next to it. You want to click on that. Make sure you're on the right item here. Drop down and we're going to hit delete and it's going to say, are you sure? And yes, we are sure. We'll hit start and it removes it. We'll look in the list here just to make sure. And yep, it is gone. And you do the same thing for any adventure log front end or back ends that you have in your app data folder. Obviously, they would be up near the top under the A's. Now let's clean up any dangling Docker images and volumes. To do that, we're going to open up a terminal window and unraid. The terminal icon is in the top right up here. Click on that icon. We're going to type Docker image prune space dash AF and then press enter. And as you can tell, I haven't ran this in a while. 18 and a half gigs. It's recovered. Next command we're going to type is Docker space volume space prune space dash f then press enter so at this point we're basically back to square one with post gis and we're ready to set it up properly next we're going to need to create a custom docker network for adventure log in the same terminal window we're going to run something like this docker network create and then the name of the network that you'd like to create in this video i'm going to name it adventure log as that's what this network is gonna be for. Then we'll press enter. And that'll create a custom network for Adventure Log. This is important because both post GIS and Adventure Log containers need to use the same network. Once you've got that network set up, go ahead and type exit. All right, now let's go install post GIS from the apps tab. So let's head over to our apps tab. In the search box, I'm gonna type post GIS, press enter, and there it is. If you haven't installed post GIS before, then this button here where it says actions, it'll say install. We want to install it. If you've already installed it and you uninstalled it, it's going to say actions because it's in your apps that it remembers that you installed. Either way, go ahead and click on that button there. We're going to drop down and do install. So go ahead and click install. I'm getting an attention window saying that the port isn't used by another program, another application. And I've got a different Postgres SQL server in here. So that's where that's coming from. If you get this attention window, then we'll address that in a moment. For now, just go ahead and hit okay. All right, first thing here under repository, we need to change this. Adventure Log requires a certain addition. I'll leave it in the description if you need it. 
Next, we need to set the network type to a custom network. So under network type, we're going to drop down, select custom adventure log. That's the one we just created. Next, we're going to need to set our Postgres password. This is important. We're going to need it in the backend container. So if you look here, it's got password for Postgres role. Here, I'm going to type in adventure log, all lowercase. All right, down at the bottom, we've got database port. This is the port that's in use by another container. If this is your first time watching my videos, then let me show you what I normally do. I'm going to scroll down a little bit, go under show Docker allocations. That will show all the allocations for all the containers that we have on the server. Up underneath database port here, we'll double click on that port number. I'll hit control F on the keyboard, brings up the find feature within the web browser. And it shows that I've got three results. One, two, and scrolling down in this list here is number three. And Postgres SQL 17 is using that port number. I normally increment my port numbers by one. In this case, it would be 5433. However, as you can see here, that was already in use. So I'm just going to go down one and make it 5431. So we'll change that port number there, 5431. Once again, I'm going to double click on it, hit Control F. It shows one result. It's right here. It's not being used at all in these allocations. So that port's free and available to use. I'll go ahead and close that find feature. I can minimize the hide Docker allocations. I don't need that there anymore. Once you've got your port number set, it's time to install the container. We'll go to the very bottom, we'll hit apply, and that'll install the container and we'll let it start. Once that's done, go ahead and hit done. All right, now we're gonna need to create the actual adventure log database inside of PostGIS. To do that, I'm gonna use Adminer. I've done a video on that in the past. If you don't have it installed, I'll leave it down in the description so you can go check that out. I'm gonna go over to my Docker containers I'll look under my databases folder, database services right there. In there, I've got Adminer. I'm going to start it up. Then I'll click on it and go to its web UI. All right, at the very top here, it says System MySQL MariaDB. We need to change this to Postgres SQL. The server is going to be the Postgres server's IP address and port number. In this case, it's on my demo machine, and that is 10.0.0.11, and then a colon. And the port number that we just assigned was 54. 31. The username is Postgres, and the password is going to be the password that you used in your PostGIS install. In this case, it was Adventure Log. Then we're going to press Login. And if everything was successful, it'll log right into the database. Now, if you had an error and it didn't connect, then you want to make sure that you check the IP address, the port number, the username, and the password. The username should be Postgres, all lowercase. The IP address and port number are going to be the ones that you have for your server. Then the password would be whatever you had set up in the PostGIS container that we just installed. Once you're in, up near the top here where it says Create Database, we're going to click on to that. The dialog box below, we're going to type in here Adventure Log, and then press Save. And that part's all set. We're going to need to use the username and password for the next step, setting up the Adventure Log backend. Let's head back to our Unraid server. We're going to go to the Apps tab. We'll search for Adventure Log. You'll see we've got two different options, the backend and the front end. Right now, we're going to focus on the backend. Find the backend and click Install. You'll get a tension window saying that it requires the PostGIS database container. We know that. It's already installed and set up. So go ahead and hit OK. Within the Containers Configuration page here, first thing we're going to do is look for Network Type. We're going to drop down and select the custom Adventure Log, the same one that we used for the PostGIS container. Scrolling down, here we'll find Database Host. This will set to the name of the PostGIS container, which the one we just installed is PostGIS. Just like that, capital P, capital G-I-S. If you had named yours something different, then you'll have to match that name here. Next down, we've got database name. We need to set this to the name of the database that we had just created, which was Adventure Log. Next down, we've got database user. This is the user that we had set for the Adventure Log database. In this case, it was Postgres. And next down, we've got database password. This is the password that we had set. And that was Adventure Log. If you had used a different password, then make sure you use that password here. All right, next down, secret key. Here we need to create a random mix of alphanumeric characters. I like to use some kind of password manager. So in this case, I'll be using my Vault Warden. And I've done a video on that too. If you want to check it out, I'll leave it down in the description too. All right, I've got one generated. I'm just going to go over here and drop it in. And if you're curious, mine is 16 characters long. All right, next down, we've got admin username. Currently it's set as admin, and I'm going to leave it with that. Here you want to pick something that you won't use as a normal user. So if you want to do something specifically for Adventure Log, you could do something like Adventure Admin or something like that. I like Admin. It's easy to remember. Going to move on. 
Next down, we've got admin email. This is going to be the email that is tied to the admin account. So you don't want to reuse an email that you plan to use for your standard day-to-day -day user. So my demo machine here, I'm going to use my demo account, which is demo at aliantech42.com. All right, next down, admin password. You're going to want to choose a strong password, and you'll use this one to log into your admin console. So make sure it's pretty secure. Once again, I'll use my password manager, create that password, and save it there so I know what it is. All right, next down, we've got the URLs. And this is where people often get stuck. So the public URL, this is the URL where the backend is reachable. In the original guide, that's the Unraid server's IP address and then the backend port. So for mine, it is gonna be the server IP here. I'm gonna take out the IP underscore address and put in my actual server's IP address, which is 10.0.0.11. You'd enter your server's IP address there. And the port number for the back end will be 8016. If you're unsure of that, you can scroll back up and you'll see it listed here under API port. All right, scroll back down. All right, next down, we've got front end URL. This is where your front end will live. You're gonna use your Unraid server's IP address and the front end port. For me, that'll be the HTTP colon forward slash forward slash. We'll get rid of the IP address text and type in 10.0.0.11. Once again, that's my server's IP address. Whatever yours is, you put it in there. Then you follow it with a colon and then the port number should be 8015. We have not set up the front end yet, but that is the default port number for it. And again, adjust those to match your setup. All right, next down, we've got CS rf trusted origins and this one trips people up a lot too here you'll need to list every url that you're going to use to access adventure log so things like your public https address the front end container ip and port your unrate ip front end and port number your unrate ip and back end port so it'd be something like this if you have an external facing site then you would do https colon forward slash forward slash whatever the name of your url is so let's case let's call it adventure log dot and my domain dot com something like that each value is separated by a comma so you put a comma in then you'd enter your internal server settings so in this case http colon forward slash forward slash we'll get rid of the ip address text and add in my server's ip 10.0.0.11 colon 8086 that is the back end port number then there's a comma for the next one that's going to be http colon forward slash forward slash. Let me go over a bit here. Once again, IP address. I'm going to get rid of that and type in the actual physical IP address of the server, which is 10.0.0.11. Then the colon and then the port number for the front end is 8015. I'm not setting up external access, so I'm going to go back to the front here. And I'll remove the https colon forward slash forward slash adventure log dot my domain dot com comma so what i'm left with is the two internal adventure log front end and back end once you've got that all set go ahead and click apply and while that's installing why don't you come join us in discord i've left the link down in the description and then click done and the back end is now all set up now let's move on to installing and configuring the front end for adventure log i'm still at the apps tab i have it right here but if you're not there let me show you real quick go to apps search for adventure log find front end we'll click on it and then click install once again we're going to get the attention window saying that this is going to require the adventure log backend container that's already set up and installed so go ahead and hit okay all right again we're going to go to network type we want to drop down and select our custom network that we had set up for these containers in this case adventure log now we're going to jump down to the public server url right down near the bottom i'm going to scroll up a little bit so this here, I've had some issues with too, and what we need to do is set this to point to the backend container on port 8000. So in this case, I'm gonna get rid of the IP address, and we're gonna put in the actual container's name. We'll leave the HTTP colon forward slash forward slash, and then capital adventure, capital L, log, three hyphens, capital B, backend, and we'll leave the colon 8000, and that should be good. Here, the adventure log backend is the backend container's name. All right, next down, origin. This should be your exposed address, the URL you actually use in your browser. So if you're setting up external access, then you're gonna have this set to your URL, whatever that is. We'll say it's HTTP colon forward slash forward slash adventure log dot my domain dot com. 
Let's get rid of everything else. And you'd be set. I'm using it internally, so mine is going to be... I'll get rid of the S. It'll be the IP address and the port number for the front end, which is going to be the address of the server, 10.0.0.11, a colon, and then the port number, which is 8015. This is going to be the server's IP and port for the front end. And again, you want to enter your actual domain name or your server and port number. All right, next, body size limit. This is the maximum upload size for the server. This should be changed to prevent someone from uploading too much. And it says the custom value will be set in kilobytes here. So a good number to put here would be 10 megabytes, which is going to be 104.85760, just like that. This is a demo. I'm just going to leave it on infinity, but that choice is up to you. Go ahead and click on apply. And by the way, setups like Adventure Log rely on a stable database, and nothing kills a post GIS container faster than a sudden power outage. I've been using the Golden Mate UPS for about a year now, and it has saved my server more times than I can count. If you're running on RAID, I seriously recommend putting your server on a UPS. I'll drop the Golden Mate model that I use in the description below. And then when it's done, go ahead and click done. All right, now let's go log in. At this point, you should be able to log in, but before we do that, let's enable auto start for the post GIS adventure log backend and the front end. To do that, let's jump over to our Docker tab. I'll find my three containers here. For me, I'm using folder view, so anything that's not in a folder is gonna be up on the top here. I'll find the items I want over on the right-hand side. I'm gonna to toggle on the auto start, just like that. Now, good practice here, since the adventure log front end relies on the adventure log back end, which relies on the post GIS container, it's a good idea to set up a delay on when these items start up. If you've never done that, over on the top right up here, you have basic view, toggle that on, then you'll see next to auto start, we now have this wait option. So you just click on the number there, the front end, we want to be the last thing that starts up. So we'll set this for something like 30 seconds. The back end, we want to be in the middle here. So let's set that for 15 seconds. And then the post GIS container, we'll leave that in zero. So it'll start up as soon as the server starts up. 15 seconds later, the adventure log back end will start. Another 15 seconds later, a total of 30 seconds, the adventure log front end will start. Once you've got that set, go ahead and toggle off advanced view and you're back to your normal view. And now let's go log in to adventure log. Or on the left hand side, we're going to look for adventure log front end. Click on the icon for it, drop down, and select web UI. All right, on this page, you've got two different login options. Same thing, bottom left or top right. Either one, go ahead and click login. Now, adventure log needs you to log in with your admin account. The one we had set up was admin for the username and the password. I had set up a super secret one. Type in your password and then press login. And we're in. Look at that. First time, Adventure Log is up and running. And that's it. Now you've got Adventure Log running on Unraid with a properly configured post GIS database, a clean backend, and a front end that actually knows where everything lives. If this helped you out, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like to support the channel directly, consider becoming a Patreon. Patreon members get early access to my videos and they are ad and sponsor free. The link is down in the description. Oh, and if you want a deep dive in Adventure Log, drop me a comment and let me know. Until then, check out one of these next, and I'll see you in the next one.